I want to share a couple of different exercises that are going to help you within those sticky spots to help build your muscles in order to be able to perform a push up on the ground. So um, what we'll need is this resistance band is optional. I'm going to show you the move here in just a moment with the band and without the band. Having the band just allows for a little bit more resistance, makes it a little bit more challenging. You also need a mat here, ideally. And then you want a tube resistance band. Now, it really doesn't matter how tight the resistance band is because you can wrap your hands to add a little bit more resistance or really utilize the handles in order to create less resistance. So I'll show you a couple options with that here in a moment. All right, so your first one is gonna be band pull-aparts. And I really love this move because you're actively thinking about pushing those shoulder blades together and squeezing them, which is something that we do in the push-up. So you're gonna take your tube resistance band. Ideally, you're gonna stand up just because of the camera height. I'm gonna stay on my knees here. So based on the band that I have, I know that I need to wrap it about two times in order to be able to fully extend my arms out and engage my shoulder blades. Okay, so I'm going to just stand on my knees here. I'm gonna tuck my pelvis, core tight. I'm gonna roll my shoulders back and down. So I'm gonna think about my shoulder blades coming together slightly and going into my back pocket, all right? So arms are here out in front of me and I'm gonna pull out, squeeze those shoulder blades and bring it back together. Out, squeeze those shoulder blades and bring it back together. This is not a movement that I wanna go like in and out really quickly here. I wanna go focused and controlled in order to think about those muscles, how they're working, and let it go back. All right, so from the side. All right, and then from the back. All right, the next move is called dead bug. If you've done Mindset to Muscles or any of my most recent fitness programs, you know that dead bug is a huge, huge important move for me, um, and I absolutely love doing it. When I had some issues with my SI joint, it was the one move that I did nearly every single day to help really build those strong internal core stabilizers. So since we use our core muscles for the push-up, and since the core position of dead bug mimics the core position in a push-up, this is a perfect move. So, a couple options here. We're gonna come back with our feet on the ground, knees bent, and we're gonna come onto our back, okay? I like to start people here just because dead bug is all about keeping your lower back pressed to the ground. And if we automatically start in the position, sometimes we forget that our lower back has to be pressed down. So, we're gonna be here. I am going to, you'll notice here, I can stick my hand under my lower back. I'm gonna tuck my pelvis so that my entire lower back is on the ground. I'm gonna think about pushing my ribs down. My core is nice and engaged here, all right? My core is nice and engaged here. I'm gonna bring up a foot and my other. Notice that I am here at 90, roughly 90, and I'm here roughly at 90 on my hips, all right? So this is my position, lower back is still down on the ground. I'm gonna lift my shoulder blades, and come here, core is tight. Opposite arm and opposite leg go down, up, down, up. So that's what dead bug looks like. Now, if that's difficult for you, you have a couple of different options. First one is, I'm gonna make sure I'm set up correctly. Feet are gonna be here. I can leave my upper body down on the ground hands on the ground here for support, and I can lower a leg, bring it up, lower a leg, bring it up, okay? If I'm feeling confident on that, I can come up here, arms are up, straight in front of, or straight overhead, I can lower down one leg, one arm, the other arm, and the other leg, and come up. Okay, so you have a couple of different options with that. But the main thing is to remember, lower back press to the ground, ribs down, core tight. If I lower my leg and my lower back starts to arch, that's a cue that says, stop lowering that leg. So let's see here. Here I am. I lower here, but oh, look, that back is starting to arch here. That's my stopping point. If you're set up in dead bug here, and you get to this point and that lower back starts to arch, 
that's okay. That's your stopping point. Work there and slowly work on getting that leg lowered down. Another great exercise, which is pretty much the opposite of dead bug, is called bird dog. I know, the craziest names for some of these fitness moves. This is a great move for, again, building that internal core stabilizer. We're mimicking the push-up position again, um, so that helps you with your upper body positioning and your core positioning. Here's what it looks like. looked really similar to dead bug, right? Here's how we set up for it. Again, shoulder positioning and hand positioning is exactly like the push-up. Press out, lower down here. I wanna make sure that my shoulders are bracketed down, so I'm gonna screw in my shoulders here, screw in my hands. And then I'm gonna have my knees be right underneath my hips. I'm gonna curl my toes, okay? Notice how my back is arched here. I'm gonna tuck my pelvis to keep my back flat. I like to think about my back being glued to the ceiling. So if I were again to lower like this, my, my middle back would not be touching the ceiling. So think about touching the ceiling here. Again, that really helps to engage the core muscles as well. So I'm gonna press down, I'm gonna do opposite arm and opposite leg again. So I'm gonna curl my toes, make sure I've got good support here. Think about being glued to the ceiling and I'm gonna go out, squeeze and down. Reset squeeze, and down. A lot of times I'll see this, okay? Notice how my lower back is kind of arching, my legs are flailing up. We want the main thing to think about, again, back being flat, because we're engaging our core, and then going straight out rather than up. And as we go straight out, especially with that glute, with that leg, squeeze that glute tight. All right, starting position of your push-up, is essentially a hand plank. So of course, we can practice planks. So come into position here, and we can just hold plank. Hold plank. All right, your other option is an up-down plank or a walking plank. Um, I think I've heard them called surrenders. Essentially, you're going from a hand plank to an elbow plank and back up. So I'm gonna set up in plank position, except for my feet. Rather than my feet being about hip width apart, I'm probably gonna spread them the width of the mat. If you remember to the beginning video, I said if you want more of a base of support, spread your legs a little bit wider. This is an example of when you would wanna spread your legs just a little bit wider. Give yourself a little bit more support. Okay, so you saw there, went from hand to elbow, my feet were wide. Hopefully you could also see that my hips weren't moving back and forth very much. The goal here is to keep those hips from swaying side to side as you're going up and down in that plank. One way that I like to prevent that from happening is to think about pressing down in the balls of my feet and actually pressing my hands down when I come up and out of that plank. So I'm here, I've got my feet wide. I'm squeezing my glutes nice and tight, lowering down, pushing back up. Also this, go a little bit slow as well and really feel how your muscles are working. If we're working on an elevation, we can also do that up-down plank. So we're just gonna set up into push-up slash plank position. Since you're on an elevation, you probably don't need to spread your legs as wide, so just kind of test it out for yourself. I'm gonna be here, lower down, One of my favorite plank variations is a bear tuck plank. So I'll demo for you really quickly. So we started out in plank and then I came into the starting position of bird dog, which we like to call a bear tuck. I love that exercise because, again, I'm getting into the actual push-up position, 
It really helps you to focus on engaging your core. Your upper body position is exactly how it should be in a push-up. You're getting to press down through those palms and it really just helps with overall stability. So we're gonna set up in plank position. We're gonna bring in a knee until it's about 90 degrees. And the other one, notice how my back is flat here. Notice how my knees are hovering, hovering over. Back and back, I reset and squeeze. Come back up and hold and go back down. Slow is the name of the game on this one if you really want an intense core burn, which I highly recommend. So we're gonna talk about this in a couple of the other videos. Hand release push up, Superman row, and slow on the up portion. So just another breakdown for this move. We can lower down slower, fast. Okay, toes are curled still, glutes are tight. I tap the top here, I row back, squeezing those shoulder blades, thinking about putting them into my back pocket. Hands come right next to my boobs, elbows are jutting back, toes curled here, and I'm gonna push up as one, one unit. Lower down, and up. Now, a variation on that move is to really just work on the Superman and a row. So really thinking about what does it feel like when my shoulder blades go back and down. So we have this as an option. So I'm gonna come onto my belly. I can either curl my toes for this variation or I can leave them just flat here. I'm gonna squeeze my butt muscles, squeeze my quads, keep my core tight. Arms are in front of me. Neck is neutral. I'm thinking about that I have maybe like an apple or an orange in between my chin here. So you can see there that I raised my arms slightly brought them back, squeeze those shoulder blades back and down, and then lower all the way down. If we're looking at it from the back, so you can see that I'm almost leading with my elbows. That's just a reminder to me personally, just to say, okay, shoulder blades are going back and down. I'm following the line of my elbows and squeezing on the way down. So if we're doing it with a band, I've got my lightest resistance loop band with me here. Again, not necessary, but if you really want to progress maybe a little bit quicker or you just need, but if you want to progress a little bit quicker or you have a band and you just want to try it out, this is a good option. So, so I'm going to put this around my wrists here. I'm going to lower down into position, either curling my toes or laying them flat. So you can see there, it's the exact same exercise. You just got the band on it here to give us more resistance as we're pulling our arms back and down. So those are some of the accessory exercises and exercises that will really help to build that core and upper body. Again, refer to your sheet to see how many suggested sets and reps for each of those exercises. It's pretty much always gonna be about three sets of 12 to 15 reps. These exercises can actually be done on an off day they don't even have to be done within your workout. You could wake up and do maybe a couple of sets or do a couple of sets before you go to bed. A couple other options that you have as well to strengthen those upper back and core muscles will be just to incorporate more pulling exercises. So if you have access to the gym doing a lat pull down, doing maybe some seated rows, maybe doing some cable rows. If you don't have access to a gym, you could do some dumbbell bent over rows, some high rows, um, some pullovers, different things like that. If you check out the blog, I have a couple of different workouts that include different rowing exercises, or you can always ask in the Facebook group if you're looking for something.